Well, thanks for logging on to southernindianaweather.com's preliminary winter 2014-2015 forecast. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Thanks for uh, watching our video today. We're sponsored by Metal Magic in Washington. Give Chad a call at 6988555 for all of your paintless tent repair needs. And be sure to tell them that Southern Indiana Weather sent you. All right, folks, you may be confused. There's winter forecasts abounding right now. You can go uh, and you can see uh, the Farmer's Almanac saying stinging and normal snowfall for our area. If you go to the old Farmer's Almanac, not to be confused with the Farmer's Almanac, something completely different. It's cold and snowy over us and just cold and dry over a lot of the other other people. If you go to the National Weather Service's website, what they're saying is just the good old equal chances for uh, temperature as far as the uh, winter is concerned at this point. So who do you believe? Uh, and, and there, by the way, precipitation is below normal. So theirs would be uh, a normal, uh, normal temperatures and dry. Well, well, who do you believe? Is it, is it going to be this? Is it this? Is it this? Maybe is it some other one? Let's dive in just briefly into a little bit of the data. Now, I will say at the outset of this, this is a preliminary winter, winter forecast. I plan to release my final winter forecast close towards Halloween, the very end of October, about a little over a month from now, roughly, is when I'll issue my final thoughts on for the winter. Meteorological winter begins on December 1, so really about a month in advance is what I'm shooting for to be able to have that forecast out there. But I wanted to give you a hint of my thinking at this point, because there's so much uh, winter madness out there right now. Everybody wants to know. Let me give you at least my initial thoughts, and then just understand that these can change over time, but this is what I'm thinking right now. Our winter is probably going to be driven in large part by what happens to El Nino. You've probably heard about El Nino before. Uh, we, we've been saying now for months, according to the National Weather Service, they're saying, oh, it, 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 I think it, at one time it was up to a 95% chance of an El Nino developing. Now they backed off down to a 65% chance. It was supposed to have already been developed by now. It hasn't now. It's supposed to be developing this winter. There's a lot of confusion right here because the models just don't seem to have a handle on it and things just aren't developing. And El Nino is still on track according to the models, but that remains to be seen exactly what we have it or not. But let me just show you what the data says right now and you can make up your mind. Basically, an El Nino is abnormal waters over the uh, coast of South America. Here's what a typical El Nino looks like. South America right here and what you've got is uh, abnormal waters. The black uh, boxed area is what we uh, typically it's called the Nino 3.4 region and this is the region we typically use to measure the strength of an El Nino event. It needs to be a half degree Celsius or better uh, on the warm side of the temperature uh, of above normal on the anomaly uh, and for three consistent months in order to qualify it as an El Nino. So that's kind of the basics of what it is right now. Just think of it as abnormal water, abnormally uh, warm water off the coast of South America and extending uh, back into the central uh, Pacific Ocean along the equator. All right. So here's what the modeling says right now. We're, we're, uh, we are about right here and what you can see is we are not in El Nino status yet. Uh, we briefly had an, uh, what looked like we almost had an El Nino from April into about June, and all of a sudden the bottom fell back off of it, and it's just where did it go? It's been on its way steadily back up, and you can see the, the, what the black dashed line here is the ensemble mean. Uh, these uh, squiggly lines here, the multicolors, are all different uh, computer model members. They're each different members uh, of a model uh, predicting of where this thing's going to go, and the black dashed lines is sort of the mean, the average of them. And you can see the average of them is to take us into an El Nino uh, later on this winter time. So if that's the case, it would certainly affect us in this winter, but not necessarily how strong would is still very much in question at this point. But here is the problem. When we actually go and take a look at sea surface temperatures right now, uh, we'll go back out here, and here's analyzed sea surface temperatures from the from basically the beginning of August, and this is what the models were predicting, not, not analyzed, but uh, analyzed at the beginning of August, and here's what the September, October, November uh, time period is supposed to look like. Here's the region we would look at for an El Nino down here, and you can see there are some abnormally uh, warm waters, not, not outrageously warm, but certainly uh, abnormally warm at this point. They're not off the coast of South America, though. Compare that to what a typical El Nino looks, and you would expect it to be a lot warmer here off of that. Let me go. This is for September, October, November. Let's go to the December, January, February, and you can see 
obviously you can expect that sea surface temperatures are going to cool down a little bit because of the season change. That's the way things go. Uh, but notice it it's not very strong waters over here. The concentration of the warmest waters, actually more here towards the central uh, part of the Pacific Ocean than they are off South America. That is still considered an El Nino, but it's a different type of El Nino. It's called an El Nino Madoki, and it has completely different effects on the United States. Uh, the El Nino Madoki typically has a cooler than normal pattern here uh, off of, South, uh, of the coast of South of America here, um, but it is in particular the warmest concentration is right here in the central portion and isn't that not exactly what we find right here it's not cooler than normal yet but it is not a very strong temperature anomaly and, and it is strengthening if anything at all it would be a Madoki El Nino if you could even classify it as an El Nino there's a big difference and here's why it matters if you're basing your entire uh, forecast for this winter off of an El Nino uh, you're likely going to get it wrong because an El Nino Madoki is much different than an El Nino Climate Prediction Center, what they're basing it off of is a typical El Nino. I think this is wrong. I don't see above normal temperatures for a good portion of the country here. I think most of us at this point are probably going to be below normal. Do I think it's going to be as extreme as what these particular ones say? Maybe, maybe not. I'm still working out about how cool it is. I don't think there's any way it stays above normal at this point. I think both of the almanacs do have it right on a cold, uh, cold uh, idea for really the eastern two-thirds of the country. I don't believe uh, this at all. I, I just think the Climate Prediction Center has it wrong. They forecasted very something very similar to this last year and they completely blew it because we all know what kind of a winter we had last year and it was cold and snowy and they called it to, and the Climate Prediction Center last year so that it would be uh, warm and mild. Well it, it wasn't. They blew it and it looks like if they continue on this pattern they're gonna blow it again. They're basing it off of a typical El Nino it's not going to be a typical El Nino. We're looking more at a Madoki. Now here's the difference. A typical El Nino, watch this, follow this. Uh, here is the abnormally warm waters, but notice here along the Gulf, uh, along not the Gulf Coast, excuse me, the, off the coast here of the Pacific Northwest and into Alaska, much cooler than normal. On a Madoki, that's much warmer than normal. Big difference because how cool or warm the Pacific Northwest gets drives our winter weather because that drives how far south the jet stream is going to take dips over us. Analyze it. Here's what it is. Notice this. It is not cooler than normal up here. It is actually pretty strongly, um, as strongly as the El Nino is down here, it is much uh, abnormally warm for the December, January, February winter time frame what would that do for us? Well, here's what a sea surface temperature anomaly would look like for that. Look for the surface air temperature anomaly and it puts basically the eastern uh, two-thirds of, of the nation into a much colder than normal pattern. This, by the way, is the JMA model. It's the Japan Meteorological Agency's model. It absolutely nailed the winter forecast last year when a lot of the others blew it. And uh, it, it is, if it stays on that track pattern again, then it looks like a cold season is coming up for us once again. Here again, we go to the sea surface temperatures. You can see that abnormally warm. This is what the model, uh, the best model that we have available is predicting for us. Here it is with the Madoki, and there it is. And that's exactly what I think that we see. If we get an El Nino at all, it's going to be the kind of uh, El Nino that's only going to strengthen this warm pool up here. Basically what happens in, in this, by the way, what you'll have, let me turn this colors on this so that you can see, uh, is the jet stream comes up like this, it actually has to go over and around this ridge uh, and, and it actually then starts to take a nosedive south because of, of more heating up in here. Canada will actually stay warmer than normal under this type of a setup uh, as well and then what that leads is to a very trothy pattern in the jet stream where we have these big dips into the jet stream which bring the Arctic air from Canada down into us. That's exactly what we saw all last winter. We saw uh, this particular region be much more above normal than it has been. It stayed that way really since about September, October of 2013. It stayed that way consistently. This is what's led to the cooler than normal summer that we've experienced and I think it's going to lead to a cooler than normal winter for us at this time frame as well. All signs are pointing to a cool winter. Now how about precipitation wise? Well I do think that we're going to see some snow. Do I think it's going to be snowmageddon? At this point I have questions on how much snow that we'll end up getting uh, at this point. Uh, El Nino Madokis typically do leave part of us drier than normal and so if that's the case uh, this below average uh, may 
may end up being more in play because a typical El Nino Madoki does leave the Midwest drier than normal. But that's assuming that El Nino Madoki even forms. Uh, we don't know that yet. Hopefully in another month we'll have an idea as to whether that's uh, really going to get going or not. Uh, could that be a cold, snowy winter? Maybe or maybe not. But it all, regardless, it looks cold to me. It's only a question of how much snow we get. And by the way, uh, below normal snowfall, that doesn't mean that you would get no snowfall. It just means you wouldn't get 40 inches of snow uh, as we saw last winter for Indianapolis, for example, 40 plus inches of snow. Actually, I think it was much more than that. I think it was closer to 50 inches. It was a ridiculous amount. Here in the Evansville, um, southern Indiana area, you know, we saw 15 to 20 inches over a large portions of many of our cities. Uh, and we may end up heading towards more of that kind of a thing again. And so uh, that's kind of uh, where we are at with it right now. That's my preliminary uh, thoughts. Folks, I don't have a map out. I'll try to release a map whenever I do my final forecast uh, in the end of October. But right now, I can tell you this. Preliminary winter forecast, cold, cold, cold. And then it's a question mark for how much snow is going to be in there. But I do think it looks it's trending towards snowy, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sure I buy completely into the El Nino Madoki forming. All I will say is if we get an El Nino out of this, that would be what we're headed towards. But I'm not convinced that it forms yet. I am convinced we're going to have a cold winter. That cold, we are in the same pattern as last year, and an, and uh, a short of something knocking that completely off track, that's where we're headed. By the way, as I'm recording this, it's September the 22nd, and we are already starting to see hints of that take place. Here is what the uh, the Euro uh, East, uh, the uh, Euro EPS weekly uh, and then monthlies end up saying these are run once a week. And as you put through this, what we're looking at is is uh, heights and about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. Warm collars translate to above normal. Cool collars translate to below normal. As I go through this, what you're going to see is an up and down month. That typically is what we have in October is an up and down month. So that's nothing new and nothing unexpected. But by later in this month, you can see uh, the deeper shades coming in. And it looks like we could have some pretty well below normal. Uh, watch this here start to develop and then dive to the south a major arctic air intrusion uh, according to this by later in the month in fact take a look at this with these deeper green shades that could be even 20 degrees below normal you know our average high temperature right there the, that particular time of the year is going to be uh, into the upper 50s low 60s 20 degrees below normal you get the idea where we could get in with that this first uh, this uh, blue line that you see going through here is the 540 thickness line it's typical rain snow changeover line it's one of the things that we we look at to determine it's not saying that snow would fall on a particular date it's saying that it would be cold enough to snow so is this set in stone absolutely not but what I'm wanting to show you here folks is the modeling is pointing to a, a, a cool snap and a cool snap in a hurry by the end of October we could be looking at the first flakes of snow flying again potentially we saw that last year by the way October 25th was when the first flakes flew last year so it is not unheard of and most certainly not out of the question We'll trend it. We'll see what happens. But for right now, it does look like a cooler than normal pattern will continue. Cold and probably snowy outside of something knocking us down. That's the preliminary winter forecast, folks. Uh, prepare now, I suppose, for a long, cold winter. I think it's on the way. I'll have my official winter forecast with a nice map. Everything, again, out by the end of October. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned here to southernindianaweather.com for more details. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite.